What is up? Eli for MoboxGraphics.com In this video I would like to show you guys how to set up a simple rig to make some 3D graphs or charts as you may call them. Most of the time people make these in Photoshop or Illustrator and it gives you a lot of control over how it looks but there is no really good way to do this if you want to edit the values or change the angle from which you're viewing it. So that is why we will be doing it in Cinema 4D. So let's get in Cinema. And making a circle graph is the simplest way to explain this. I'll be using a cylinder like this one. And if you go to the slice tab, you can turn it on. And actually you're already making a pie chart by doing this. For example, I can set the start point to 90 degrees so it starts at the top. And just use the second value to fill the circle like I want to. By holding Ctrl or Command and clicking the small circle, I can set some keyframes to animate this transition. And this could be enough for you if you're just trying to make some animations that don't need a specific value or percentage. But you can already tell we are working in degrees and not percentages. It would be nice to have a slider for this that goes from 0 to 100 and does the math for us. So I'm going to undo what I just animated and also set both values to 90 degrees. So we are back at the start point. And then right click on the cylinder and go in the character tags and take the pose morph tag. Before we can move on with this, we need to choose what will change between the two states that will be affected. So in this case we will be using the parameters of this slice, so pick this one. So right now we get this interface. And this base pose will be whatever your model looked like when we were creating this tag. And this pose 0 will be our end value, which will be a full circle in this case. So select this pose 0 and now we can go back to our cylinder and make the adjustments like we want to. Let's set the second value to minus 270 degrees so we get a full circle. And now when we go back in the pose morph tag, you can set the mode to animate and there is a slider we were trying to get. This way we have a perfect representation of a percentage we enter on the slider which will be calculated in degrees by Cinema 4D. Another useful thing with these kind of animations is to have the actual number being displayed next to it. So the viewer can actually see what the value is. You could animate this separately with its own slider, but it is better when it automatically moves together. Go to the MoGraph menu and get yourself a MoText object. And we can already scale this down for now. Now get a new null up here. And this will be just an invisible piece in your scene that holds the main slider we will be creating for all the other objects. So with this null selected we can go to the attributes and go in the user data menu and then select add user data. In this new window you can already set up a name for it if you like to but it isn't obligated. And now it is important to set this data type to integer. And after you've done that you can also set the interface to integer slider. You can also customize this if you want it to go in steps of 10 for example or if it needs to go further than 100 you can set that here. But I'm going to keep these at default and just hit OK. We now have a slider ready to get linked. As it is right now it's just a dummy slider that does nothing so we need to link it up. We will be using a little bit of Expresso to get this done. I know Expresso can be a little intimidating, but you shouldn't worry because we will not be working with the nodes like it is usually done. So just make sure your slider is set at zero right now. And then right click on top of the attribute we just made. And then go in the expressions and select set driver. So this means the slider will drive all the other values we link to it now. So to make the text go along with it, select the mode text and right click this text value. Go in the expressions drop down again and take set driven relative. It's very important to take the relative for this one otherwise you don't get the right numbers. Let's check if this works and it seems to work perfectly fine. Great now a last thing to do is going in that post morph tag we made and make sure everything is also set at zero. Also the slider we just made. And now we can set this one to driven relative again so it will move along with the other slider. So that is how we can quickly set up a simple radial or circular graph which is easy to control and animate. Also something nice you could do with this now is right clicking this slider attribute and click add to HUD. 
This way you get this small slider in your viewport so you don't need to search for it all the time. You can move this around by holding Ctrl or Command and dragging it to wherever you like. You can also right click on it and set it to show always so it will stay visible even when you deselect your objects. Let's see what else we can do with this kind of techniques. I'm going to open a new document and we will be making a bar graph in this one. We will get a cube to start with of course. And to keep things easy I will just make it 100 centimeters long so every percentage will be like 1 centimeters. And for the other dimensions it is just what you think would look nice. With this cube we cannot slice it like we did on the cylinder. So what you can do instead is using the bool object. So get a duplicate of this other cube and make it like one centimeter bigger in every direction so it overlaps. And now when you get them under the bool object in the right order, you should see nothing anymore because this is actually cutting it off. So that will be the start point for us or 0% as you may call it. We will set up a slider with a new null again. Let's add some new user data. The data type and interface to integer and integer slider and the numbers can stay as they are. Now right click this slider again and set the expressions to set driven. Okay now we need to link this slider with the movement of the bigger cube. So let's get in the coordinate step of that cube and you have this P for position and we want it to move on the Y value so up and down. Make sure to select the Y itself so it turns yellow and right click on it. Go to Expressions and set to Driven Relative. This way we have it grow with our percentages. A nice detail we can add is a ruler that grows together with it. And there are multiple ways to get such thing. But I wanted to keep things simple by just getting a new cube and making it 100 centimeters tall again. And also with 100 segments on it. And then only 1 centimeters big in all the other directions. Now make this editable. And then there is a little bit of work to it by selecting every 10th polygon. I know it takes some time and you can probably also do this with a cloner. But sometimes I just want to keep things simple. So when you reach the top we can press D and extrude these. I will go with 2 centimeters, which looks nice. Alright, now we will need to set this up to reveal itself together with the other cube. You could just put this in the bool we already have. But the problem with that would be that you couldn't get two separate materials without having the wrong color on the cut of the bool itself. So let's copy and paste the bool we already made and just switch the original cube with this ruler here. Now you can move the whole bool object on its own to the side. And if everything went well, using the main slider we created will make both move up and down at the same pace. A last thing we will add is the numbers next to it again. And we will also make it move along with the ruler. I'm going to align my mode text with the top of the ruler and apply the set to driven expression. But actually that doesn't work correctly because my slider is still at the 100%. So make sure to set it at zero first and then let's do this again and see if it works. Okay that works now. The final step will be to make this move along with the ruler. So with the value at 100 we can go in the mode text coordinates and click this Y value again and set it to driven relative again. Also by doing it this way the text will be hidden under the floor when the value is still at 0 which can be useful. And we can also add this slider to the HUD like we did with the other graph. A last thing I want to point out is how you can make some really nice circle graphs using a tube object. I will speed up some parts of this because it is just the same thing over again. But one thing you should pay attention to when slicing your tube or also your cylinder maybe is that you get this nasty rough start or ending. And that is because we don't have very much rotation segments on this one. So if you change this from 36 to something like 360 it will be perfectly smooth again. Another thing I'm doing here is setting up the text so it can align with the center of that middle cylinder I made. So set your text aligned to the center of course. And when the depth is also large enough you can make a nice bool cut with these two. Everything else about this graph is just the same stuff as you've seen earlier in this video. So I'm going to group all objects on each of these graphs we've made. 
and then put them together in one scene so we can have something to work with. Now here you can probably tell this bar graph is a lot smaller than the other ones and we will start putting materials on these in just a minute but for what I'm planning to do the objects need to be pretty large or it won't work correctly. So when we scale this group you can see this is totally messing up everything and becomes unusable. What we actually need to do is changing this model mode to object mode. This is something you should always look at if things start behaving weird when you're moving or scaling things. And with this enabled, we can now successfully scale this in proportion. Okay, we can go ahead now and start building our studio and get some materials for these. First off, I will go to the side view and make a spline that will represent the studio backdrop. To get these perfect straight lines, I press escape after creating the first point and then duplicate by holding control or command and dragging. So after you get something like this, select this point in the corner and you can right click and pick chamfer. This way you can make perfect smooth curves that will not give some weird shadows or bumps like when you would do it with the pen tool. To turn this in an actual object we can see we need to extrude this. Make sure it is going in the right direction and doesn't get angled or something. And I'm going to make this very large, so we are sure we only see this backdrop from all angles. Actually, mine is still even a little small. The material for this backdrop will just be the default one, but set the color to pure white instead of light grey. Let's also make sure the bottom of these line up correctly before we move on. Nice. For the lights, I will start by adding a global illumination to the scene. And before closing this, you should probably set your second method to light mapping if you want the same lighting as me. I'm actually going to light the scene with some huge spheres that have a luminance material on them. So you can disable all the other material channels and only keep the luminance one. I said the spheres can be huge and with that I really mean huge like this. I will also get one on the other side and also one on the top. And then finally on the front I will be using a smaller one so it doesn't get too bright and the shadows get a little bit harder. So let's render this and take a look. And that looks like a pretty even lighting for now, but a little dark still. What I almost always do when things are too dark, and you may have already seen this in my other videos, is adding a regular light and checking the ambient illumination option at the bottom. But it doesn't need to be too bright, so you can crank down the brightness quite a lot. Moving on to the materials now, I want these to kind of match the look you often see on the graphs made in Photoshop. They have this glossy plastic feel to them, and that effect mostly comes from the strong reflections on the edges. They're actually that strong and fake that we will have to fake them in Cinema 4D. So on the color channel, get yourself a layer. And inside of that we will start with a shader, effects and ambient occlusion. This one will make the fake edge reflections you often see on those graphs. Inside of this you should set up your gradient something like this. Also make sure to check invert direction at the bottom, otherwise nothing will happen. And there is no perfect way to put this gradient honestly. You should really make some renders and see what works best for your scene because it all depends on your scale of the objects. You can already see it a little on this preview here at the side. But most of the time you will have all three knots like this or a little more towards the middle of this bar. So that is done for now. Let's go back to the layer itself and add a new shader which will be a gradient. You can already set it to Dutch as well. And inside the gradient all we need to do is setting it to circular and inverting the knot so it gives a vignette look. The whole layer is done now, but we should set this mix mode to add and also lower the mix strength a lot so the effect isn't too strong. And now you can also set the color to anything you like and then right click here on color and copy that value. This way we can turn on the luminance channel and paste it on there. I'm adding this luminance so we get a brighter look to it, otherwise everything gets really dull. But right now it is a little intense because I forgot to turn down the brightness to something like 80 or 70% maybe. And that looks better. I'm also getting a second color variation for this one by just duplicating and changing the colors on both channels. For the ruler you can also set up whatever you like. 
but I just want it to look like something kind of flat and grey and that can simply be done with a luminance material again which is set to grey. Ok that will do for now, let's quickly animate this so we can wrap things up. I can go to both our sliders and add these to the HUD and also make sure they are always showing. For the bar graph it's animation, it is just straightforward with two keyframes. For the other one there is a little bit more to it because of this middle cylinder and we also have this ugly slice sticking out at the start. But what I want to do first is animating the color of the middle cylinder so it kind of represents the value. So like 0 is red and 100 is green for example. So duplicate one of the materials we've made and set the start color to red. And make sure you also set the luminance channel to red. And then after making sure you're on keyframe 0, control or command click this circle next to the color on both the color and the luminance channel so we get a keyframe. And then move to your last keyframe of the animation and set both to green and keyframe again. To finish this animation I think it looks nice when the cylinder is hidden under the ground at the start. You could also do the same thing with the slice that is sitting here. But what I like to do with annoying issues like this one is getting a display tag on the object and turning on the visibility part of it. And at frame 0 I will set it at 0 first and at the next frame I keyframe it to 100%. One thing with these brighter colors is that you can't actually see the internal shadows on the numbers here. In that case you may want to turn on the ambient occlusion to fix that. I also noticed I accidentally set the visibility to 1% instead of 100. And let's not forget about the ambient occlusion of course. So this way we get some 3D graphs and charts like you see them made in Photoshop or Illustrator. But fully functional in Cinema 4D, you can change your view, you can change the colors, the lighting and also most importantly the value. And that wraps up this tutorial. There are a lot of things you can probably do with these techniques, also way beyond infographics. The download of this file will be available at our Patreon, the link is in the description. And also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos in the future.